A rectangle has a length of 10 inches and a width of 6 inches. If the length is increased by x inches and the width is increased by twice that amount, express the area of the rectangle as a function of x. All right. So before we kind of get into what's changing and what's going on, let's just take a look at our picture, right? We've got a rectangle down here. The length is going to be 10. The width is going to be 6 inches. If I now had to ask you how to calculate the area of this rectangle that you see, how would you do it? And you say, oh, man, Andrew, that's so simple. Length times width. I know that formula. And if you told me the length, and that's going to be 10 inches, and you told me the width is going to be 6 inches, then I just kind of either know the answer, right, or plug it into your calculator, whatever you got to do, but it's going to be 60 inches squared. And we're going to say, fantastic job. And you are absolutely correct. Now, what they're telling us then is that this is not technically the area. This would be the area, let's say, at the start. But the length is now changing by some amount. It's saying it's increased by X inches. Now, think pictorially. All right, this is the shape. Think pictorially. Think the problem through. And I promise if you just think it through and you draw some pictures, it's going to make so much more sense. Okay? I want you to conceptualize it. Don't memorize, conceptualize. Now, when I go back to my picture, I'm going to increase the length of this rectangle by some amount. I'm going to call it X. It doesn't tell me how much, but don't be afraid. Just label it X. Okay? Now, not only is the length going to be changed by X, but it turns out that the uh, width will be increased, right? It also told us by twice that amount. So let's say if this represented X, then it's going to be twice that amount, so maybe 2x. So this is kind of a little bit to scale, so hopefully that... What happened there? Not really sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, there we go. So now, hopefully this length... Uh, well, it's a length, but it's really the width of the rectangle. Hopefully that makes sense that this increased by 2x now. Okay, whereas this only increased by x. Hopefully the proportions kind of make sense. It's not exactly uh, to scale, but that should hopefully make sense. Now the question is this. How would you calculate the area of this new figure? How would you do it? Well, you'd say, Andrew, I still know that the formula is going to be length times width. And Andrew, I know that the length now is not 10, but it's going to be 10 inches plus some unknown number of inches. Good. Plug that in. It's going to be, and I'm going to leave out the units here just because I, it's going to get a little messy with all the letters all over the place, but it's going to be 10 inches plus some unknown value of inches that you're adding. I'm going to say, great. Yes, that would be the length. I 100% agree. And you're going to say, well, wait a minute. If that's a length and I got to multiply that then by the width now, and I know the width was six inches, but then we're adding some unknown value of two times whatever the change was of the length, meaning 2x, then I know basically I'm just going to write that on in. That is going to be six plus now 2x. And just think about this now for a second. If x were zero, if it didn't change at all, what would this term be inside of this parenthesis? It would be 10. What would it be inside of this parenthesis if x were zero? It would be six. 10 times six is 60, and that's exactly what we got before. Pretend it changed by only one inch, let's say. Then this would have been 11, and then this over in this parenthesis, right, would have been six plus then two times one, which would have been eight. And that would have, you just would have played 88 now would have been the new area. And that's all it is, right? This is actually the answer. You have now a function for the area, or excuse, yeah, you have a function for the area as a function of then the X, right? In other words, you have an equation, in which case the area will change as a function of how the length is changing, meaning X. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all there is to it. If you wanted to now take this and make some type of a crazy quadratic out of it, go for it, right? You have two binomials. You can now do whatever you want. You can take the 10 times the 6, right? So that would have been A is equal to then 60. There's so many ways this can look. Then it's 10 times then the 2X, right? Which is going to be 20X. Then it's going to be the X times the 6, which is then 6X. And then it's the X times the 2X, which is going to be 2X squared. Right, you can add up these common terms in the middle. I'm going to do my work on over on the right-hand side. So that's going to be 60, 60 now plus then the 26x plus 2x. And you might say, oh, can I factor out a 2? Sure you can. I mean, you can do a whole bunch of things now. If you wanted, you don't really have to. 
but you can write something like this. That is going to be 2 multiplied now by 30, right? Multiplied by 30. Plus then half of 26 is going to be what? 13, right? 13x plus then x squared. And you can write your formula like that. Okay, this is would be acceptable. I mean, there's so many ways you can do it. All right, but one of those will be the answer, whatever you need. Um, they're both equivalent, okay? One is just kind of in a factored form. But yeah, that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I do hope this video helps. And if it did, just give us a hand, like and subscribe. Maybe even tell some of your classmates. We'd love to help them too. And by the way, check out our channel. We have thousands of videos out there. Okay, and we have a lot more coming, not only in math, but physics, chemistry, and we got more subjects coming out soon. All right, so stay tuned. And by the way, don't get frustrated with math. All right, give it time, right? I have a feeling if you're frustrated and you don't like math, it might be because you might not be great at it. Think about anything in life. Do you like doing things you're not good at? No, but does that mean if you're not good at it now that you're not going to be good at it in the future? No, 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 it does not at all. You can become amazing at it. You just have to practice. Some of us have to practice more than others. I wasn't, you know, of the of the gifted type, so I had to practice a lot. But it's well worth it in the end. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.